I'm going to go through the code and show you guys what some of these different uh, parameters mean. Um, as you can see, we have this linker information up top that's just so we can keep this kind of stuff handy. I think the headers that we want to include are cl.h, sdl, opengl.h. That's so the compiler knows that we're using sdl and opengl. I don't know if we need this but um, for this program, but I kept it in there anyway. Windows.h is so we can use the USB port. These two are for the dial and math.h is for the trig functions. I omitted this out of the source file that I uploaded and then the input output stream is just uh, your, your basic input output. So what we got here is uh, SDL init. It just initializes all the SDL functions. The section right here is the memory allocation. Um, we use it to set how much memory we want. We want OpenGL to use, um, but just make sure that these numbers are divisible by two. SDL. WM set caption. Uh, this is just the title of the window. Uh, I titled it monitor. The set video mode is to set the window size and depth. I chose 640, 640 by 480 and 32 bits. This is the color of the screen when it's um, cleared. When OpenGL swaps the buffers, it clears the screen, and this is the color that it's going to clear. Um, GL viewport is which which is written right here. Um, which portion of the frame is visible? Gradient smoothing isn't used, but I just kept it in there anyway. This is for 2D GL projection for 2D drawing. We want to make sure that depth test is disabled because we're only going to be working with 2D, and this is for purpose of 3D when an object is from in front of another object. Um, they want to display the objects that's the object or objects that are in front rather than what's behind. So we don't need this for 2D. Alright, so let's take a look at this. Um, first we declare a variable of the name handle and initialize it with the call to create file. This, the first argument uh, to create file is simply the name of the file you want to open. In this case, we want to open a serial port. Um, we can use COM1, COM2, etc., but on my computer, it's COM3. The next argument tells Windows whether you want to read or write to the serial port. I haven't really done much um, writing to the serial port. I haven't experimented with that, but for here, we're just going to use read, generic read. The third and fourth line down should pretty much always be zero. The next argument tells us that Windows should only open an existing file. And since the serial port already exists, this is this is just what we want. After this comes file attribute normal, which just tells Windows that we don't want anything fancy. And that last zero there is just pretty much always going to be zero. For whatever reason, Windows requires that we use a special constant to, spec to specify the baud rate. Uh, these constants are pretty much straightforward. CBR uh, 19200 for 19200 baud. CBR 9600 is the one that I used. Um, just make sure that whatever number you put in there, you just put it in with the CBR underscore and then the baud rate that you choose and also make sure that it's matching with your Arduino code. After that, um, we have one stop bit and no parity. We want to leave those alone, just leave those the way they are. We won't really be changing those much. One of the big problems with serial port communications is that if there isn't any data coming into the serial port, uh, if the serial port or if if the serial port device gets to get disconnected or turned off, for example, then attempting to read from the port can cause your application to hang while waiting for the data to show up. There are two types of uh, fixes for this. First you can use multi-threading which is just beyond me. 
uh, and the other is using timeouts. And that is what this uh, section here is for. Down here we have our our buffer. This is where we declare our buffer and then we have miscellaneous other declarations which we will use later. Um, keep on scrolling down. We come to our main loop. While is running. This is basically a program stop. Um, and we use the event event.type um, SCL quit. When you hit the escape key the application will close down. Next we actually read the serial port um, and it puts it in, like I mentioned before, an 8-byte eight, eight buffer. And then down here it takes the data from the COM port and, use, and this is where we use it in our program. The 0-byte, 1-byte, and 2-byte number 2, number 1, and 0 are what we're going to use in our our interface. We first want to clear our, our buffer and then we have this line of code called GL push matrix and this is the start phase of our rendering. Now comes the tricky part in our program. This is the dial indicator. Um, first we have a variable PTDG. This is the point or the degree and as you'll see, our dials start pointed directly to the right, which is, I believe, 2 pi radians. So what happens here is um, we're doing a little bit of scaling. Uh, we get the RPM 0, which is the 0 on uh, the first, first 8 bits, the first byte on our buffer. And we divide that by 255, which is the maximum value from 0. 255. We multiply it by 2 pi and that'll get where on our rotation scale that point should be. We have to define the center of our first dial. Uh, we use tax sin x and tax sin y. Our first dial will be tax sin x 0. The next one will be 1 and then 2. The reason why this is all tricky is because, let me, let me show you the the polar circle we got here. We basically have a cosine and a sine for the x and y on our polar. We basically want to do a Cartesian to polar conversion, but the cosine and the sine are going to be a neg either a negative or positive value, and if you don't set it up right, the dial will swing all over the place. So getting back to our program, we have uh, tech X and tack Y, which is the actual needle on the dial, and we're doing above the tack line, the tack X equals tack sin X zero, and then the tack sin X or tack sin tack sin Y zero. We're doing the Cartesian polar conversion for the for the needle, and then it's going to be 75 pixels long. Moving on to the Tachometer line, GL begin starts our line, and you always start with the GL begin and the, what type of uh, command you want. There's GL lines, there's GL points. I'm gonna go and paste in what GL codes you can use to create shapes. You have GL points, GL lines, GL line strip, GL line loop, GL quads, which will make a shape uh, with four four dots and then fill it in. GL triangles does the same thing, and then polygon, um, however many points you write in there, how many vert vertices you write in there, it will just draw the shape. What else do we have here? Tack line, yeah. Uh, after that, we want to color our line red, so we use the GL color 4UB. After the color part, the 4UB, that can change, but uh, for now, this will just work for us. We have a 255, 11, 15, and then the alpha channel is 255 which will give us a red for our tachometer and then the center of the line is the tax sin zero which is declared above that's just where it's gonna show up on in our 
in our window and then the other end is where it's pointing to which is tech x and tax tech y we use these same variables later um, which doesn't matter because it draws it then you can update the variables and then it will draw uh, whatever whatever variables you updated it to to give us something to point to I have positional points um, we're going to color, color them black so we have a uh, GL color for UB 000255 we have a GLBN we use GL points and we want to go from the center outwards these are going to be um, the top bottom left and right so on our little chart here it'll just be pi pi over 2 2 pi and 3 over 2 times pi and then for the complicated part which is the other eight uh, dots in between the quadrants we have this mess of code which I really don't feel like deciphering how I figured this out but um, you basically use trigonometry rules um, the Sokotoa and so on and so forth from here on out we just copy what we had for dial 2 except we change RPM 1 or RPM 0 to RPM 1 and then I want to make sure there's no other subtle changes that you guys should know about um, our tax in Y, the center of it, as we defined all the way up here. Um, I think I, or I, this is the middle one is in direct center, and then I spaced them to the left and to the right of the center. And then at the end of drawing all of our tachometers, dials, draw it to the screen by calling SDLGL swap buffers. And then at the end, we just have a little delay in there. Close the handle. H serial, SDL quit, and then return zero. Now I'm going to talk to you about the business end of everything. The uh, Arduino Uno. All right, let's just uh, pull up the code that we got. Go to paste bin, it'll be much easier. I edited it since I've posted it on paste bin. I go into Arduino, the Arduino.exe. All right, what we have here is uh, we declare um, constant integers, analog pins, these are the pins that we're going to use for our input from the potentiometers, um, sensor values and the output values. Sensor values are going to be 12 bits, the output values are going to be scaled of the sensor values, so they're going to be 8 bits. And then down here we have the unsigned character. We want it unsigned so that uh, it doesn't send a positive or a negative value down our USB to the computer or else it will be seeing weird characters positives and negatives are no good. It will be from 0 to 127 if it's a positive or negative if it's signed or if it's unsigned it will be from 0 to 255 which is exactly what we want. Right here is where we set up our buffer. Right now I just have random numbers in there. I use this to test um, whether or not um, it's sending the correct information using the serial monitor. We set up our serial communication at 9600 baud bits per second and we just want to make sure that it is the same as what we have in our program wherever that is, I think it's up here there you go, we can speed it up if we want but it's not that big of a deal in our loop we read the analog pins and we assign them to the sensor values right here it's only it's 12 bits and then we use the, the map function to map them from 1023, uh, the number from 1023 to 255 for the 8 bit conversion from 12 bits. And then we have our output values that we assign to our buffer that we created up here. Right here, serial.write, we write all of our values and we write the three values from the potentiometer and then I just stuck a number in there so that it's an even number of things that we're writing or else um, things might get a little hectic uh, the dials will jump around more and it just won't look right and then we wait 10 milliseconds for the next loop um, just so the analog digital converter can settle down 
after the last reading. Now comes the exciting part. We gotta set up our breadboard circuit so that three potentiometers wired up correctly. It's not too complicated. Just make sure that the center pin on the potentiometer is hooked up to um, analog input A0, A1, and A2. Um, on my circuit, I have the power supplied from the computer hooked up to the positive and negative bus on my breadboard. Just be sure to reset your Arduino or your dial indications might be off.